Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Hi, Boris. How are you tonight? <clears throat> Today I'm we fine. are... Uh, hello? I'm fine. Great, great. Yeah. Aren't you excited, guys? Aren't you excited? This is your last week in this module. And we are just a step of ending the course. And um, I just want to tell you guys that the topic or the global purposes of this module are really trending, okay? They are at the top of the careers of the future, marketing, never ends remember every time we're trying to trade uh, anything we trade our images we trade our own personality we trade our job for money so it's uh, interesting that we could use all the elements of marketing in our own favor okay put everything in our side yeah and it's interesting to learn this in a different language, yeah? To learn about a marketing in a different language. It opens more doors, right? It opens more doors. How do you feel tonight? Hello, Elias. Welcome, Kevin. Hi, Alvaro. Are you still abroad, Alvaro? Hello. Hi, are you still abroad? Está what? todavía fuera. Todavía está fuera. Yes. Oh, okay. Well. Mm -hmm. And you are not expecting to come back soon. Not yet. No. Oh, all right. All right. Well, good luck over there. Good luck. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ulisse. All right. Hello, Carlos Ernesto. Welcome. Hello, teacher. How are you tonight? Yeah, so so. Okay. Kind of tired. Um, a little, a little uh, bit. All right. Uh, I'm tired. Yes. Uh, complicated in the uh, job in your in your job in my job uh, okay uh, it's some something uh, difficult in my family oh okay well yes, i'm sorry can. to hear it <laughs> okay but uh, uh i'm going to solve it okay this situation all oh, right. I hope you get. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it. We. We, we were uh, sick. Oh, okay. Sorry to hear about it. I know <laughs> what's that. Yeah. Similar in my house. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but did you, what, I mean, did you go to the doctor and are you, uh, do you have, now medication treatment yeah okay in my case uh, my wife uh she was in the hospital okay oh god the situation complicated but oh. yes she's better oh okay well thank god in your thank case god. Is no good. Yes, actually, it's out, everybody is at home. Um, they didn't go to study. They didn't go to school. My husband didn't go to work either. I worked because I was working from home. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I, I understand. Well, I hope that everything um, gets better around your house. Okay. And may you yeah. be blessed. And this new week, yeah, because actually, 
we have to survive, right? <laughs> we have to survive. Yeah. All right, yeah. people. Well, thank you for being here, Carlos. Thank you for okay. being here. I hope you're better in your house. Oh, thank you very much. I hope you too, your family too, and your daughter. Thank All you. right, people. Welcome, everybody. This is your, um, let's say we are about of ending this course because we are just a week of doing it, right? Of ending. So welcome everybody, welcome Carlos Alberto. We are going to continue with the topic causative verbs as a manner of feedback. And remember that we use mm, different causative verbs. Causative verb is a verb to help, uh, no, 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 uh, to describe. Yeah, to describe um, the action caused by another person. Uh, to another object or to another uh, a person, okay? So are you guys okay with causative verbs at the moment? Is there any question in the air? Do you have any question about the causative verbs? Yeah, when I, when I use the causative verb help, uh -huh. I don't know if I need to use to or I no tengo que usarlo. Actually, it's up to you. It's up to you. And sometimes it's required only in the cases that the next thing you are going to say, it's a purpose. Okay. Because obviously the infinitive verbs are used to express purposes. Um, Like in order to achieve something. So then is when you're going to use infinitive. But help is not required, but you can use it, okay? It's not required, the two part of the verb, but you can use it, and it is not a problem. What you don't have to use is the ing, okay? So let's say it's optional, and try to start using help in that way, optional, right? If you find expression by reading, listening, um, or I don't know, maybe in the books or in the class, examine that, um, that uh, expression closely, and then you are going to find the, find the differences, okay? Okay, teacher, thank you. All right, all right. Okay, guys, so we're going to start a class by doing our feedback. Remember that we have two different um, structures when using the causative verbs. The first structure is when we want someone to do something, right? Or the subject is um, causing the action of the other person okay so that will be the oh okay Lorena no problem all right the causative verb first one second one second one second please Okay, then we have subject plus causative plus the object plus the verb in the base form or two, depending on the causative we're using. Uh, so allow me to show you here. The slide we had it last time. Well, in the first causative verbs one. So on Thursday, we started this. And as a matter to recall, let's recall this in this way. 
When we use make and get, there is a difference. Make doesn't require that to and the other and the main verb or the verb that call the caution act. I'm, I'm sorry. The action cost, the action cost. So subject causative plus object plus the verb plus two. So the the two in some cases, as I said, when we use make, we don't use it. That is why this is in, two, in parentheses. Now, when we use get as a causative, then we need to use the infinitive with a two part, okay? So this is the first, the first um, structure. Now we have another structure. For example, we were saying um, Friday on Friday that we use the subject plus the causative plus the object plus the plus the verb three. Here I've got an example. For example, I go to the beauty salon, right? And usually, uh, when we speak in Spanish, we say, fíjate que me fui a cortar el pelo, o fíjate que me peiné bien diferente, o me pinté el pelo, but I didn't by myself, right? I didn't by myself. In English, this is the way to say it. The way to say it is, I got my hair done yesterday. I got my hair dyed yesterday. I had my hair come yesterday. Done means anything that you do in your hair. Okay, you can cut it, you can pump it, you can exercise it, you can do anything with your, with your hair. So I got my hair done yesterday. That's the way to say it. For example, I got a haircut done yesterday, right? That's different too. Uh, so we use subject plus causative plus the object plus, plus the verb three. Verb three is the participle verb form, okay? The past participle. Ahí tenemos que recordar cuál es la forma del verbo, particip del verbo en pasado participio, ¿verdad? Subject plus causative plus object plus the verb three. Ese lo vamos a utilizar cuando usted haya mandado hacer algo. Y usualmente los verbos que usamos para eso son get, have, eh, más que todo have. Y usualmente estamos contando las cosas que yo mandé a hacer, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, yo estoy mostrando mi casa. I had, okay, I had an engineer, an architect to design my house, right? So I, I'm not going to say like this. I can say I got my house designed by an architect. That This is why we use the passive voice or the passive causative, right? The passive voice and the causative verbs. So um, this is what we use, right? We use the verb have, usually, um, but it's not limited to, and the verb get, okay? The verb get. Help is another verb that can be used like this. Uh, let. It's another verb that can be used like this. And there is a list of verbs that you can use this way, okay? I'm just saying that the most common in this usage are make, have, or get. Porque esos son los verbos que significan o dan la idea de mandar a alguien a hacer algo o tener haber ordenado a alguien a hacer algo. Porque esos son sus significados Normales, ¿verdad? Make, have, and um, let, help, right? So, <clears throat> let's look at these other causatives. We were saying yesterday about the help and uh, the require, order, um, let's say, let. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are active. These are active voice sentences. So these other causatives usually requires two 
after them. For example, they require you to feel, to feel out the form before you can donate blood. They require you to feel. Require is a causative here. Joan is helping me. Helping me, I am the object, paint. Help, I could say helping me to paint and it is not a problem. The general order, the soldiers to lay down their weapons. To lay down their weapons. Uh, my dad sometimes lets me drive. We have to conjugate the causative verbs according to the subject. Can you help me solve these math equations? Um, you see, help and solve, right? The hospital staff only allows family members to visit the patient, patients. Uh, uh, the hospital staff is the subject, allows is another, allow is another causative verb, right? Because it means permit. Eso significa, ¿verdad? Permitir, dar permiso, allows. Family member to visit, allows to visit, right? Allows to visit. Now, please remind me to call my mom when we reach our destination. Remind is a causative because it requires the object to be done. So for example, re remind me, remind you, remind, remind him, remind them, okay? And then the verb needs to, remind me to call. They won't permit me, permit is the same that allow and the same as let. So um, with let, we don't use to, but with permit and allow, yes, we do. We have to use to, permit to return, permit to return. Okay. This is just free. Excuse me, but uh, mm -hmm. teacher, permit is the same, uh, it's only synonym, synonym that uh, allow. Yes, of course. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Yes, allow, permit, and let. They have the same meaning, right? Mm -hmm. And mm, let's uh, go with some exercises, okay? I will share a link for you. And we are going to practice if we're going to use to or not, okay? Bien, eh, tenemos que tener en cuenta que hay unas cosas que las ordenamos para que estén hechas, ¿verdad? Entonces, esa palabra hecha, que es nuestro participio, ¿verdad? En español, eh, es de la manera como es en inglés, o sea, es la misma forma. Entonces, tal vez eso nos da un poco de asociación a la hora de leer y completar estas oraciones, ¿ok? Bien. There you are.
Sí les abrió el sitio. Yes, teacher. Ah, ok. Yes, teacher. All right. Yes, we are working in, in it. All right, thank you very much. I was waiting for it to be, I mean, to to uh, download will be, right? It's not downloading, but charging. <laughs> I was waiting. Okay. What number are you in now? In the tree. All right. If you want, we can do it together. Number one says, Sally made me uh, the verb causative. The causative verb here is make, right? Because it's in the past tense. Sally made me. Then I have to complete over day my shoes before I went in, into her house. She said she wanted to keep the carpet clean. It made me to take or off without. Take, take off. All right. I see that you have no time to clean the house on your own. But so you have better get somebody mm -hmm, it for you. Don't need for you. Uh get somebody. Don't. Uh -huh. It's for you because uh, he's past, had better get somebody. Uh -huh. Don't. Okay, here we've got had better. Had better is an expression. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you don't know this. Um, to do for it, yeah, but for you, can better. you, can you, it's better. I know it's correctly, but I thought it was a, so you had better get somebody, don't uh, eat for you. Okay. Well, actually, I defer, but. Okay. Uh-huh. You can say somebody to do it for you. Okay. Better. It's better. Tag. Hmm? Okay. Oh, I see. What number are we in now? Three, number three. Number three. What you should do before an emergency occurs is to get your fire alarm. Yeah, to get your fire alarm, mm -hmm, that will also make you feel safer. Nice. Huh? Fix to or fix. Okay. Take that will also make your feel safer. And no, we need to complete right here. It says to get Number your three. fire alarm. The fire alarm is the object. Okay. So yeah. you need it in what way? To fix or fixed? To fix. To fix. And no, we are in the second. We are in the second, right? Just ah, what you free. should what should do before an emergency occurs? Ah, I see, it's before. It says what, sh uh -huh. what you should do before an see. emergency occurs. What should it be before an emergency occurs to get a fire alarm? Fix that will also make you feel safer. Yeah, fix it. Yeah, uh, right. All right, number yeah, four. Yeah, it's logic. Exactly. Yeah, she had to, she had to have her phone number. Teacher, uh, I didn't understand uh, why we use a uh, fix it. Uh, because this causative um, is requiring the object. Um, let's say, how can I explain this? It is not working as a verb. To be safer. To yes, be of safer, course. you need to fix of it. Of course, before. it is. Uh, to get is the causative. To get is the causative. And the causative has to be there. But look, 
The subject here, right, uh, is what should, uh, the subject here is the thing that you should do, okay? What you should do before an emergency, ese sería nuestro subject, right? Pero the idea is to get your fire alarm like a result, right? Um, fixed, yeah? To get your fire, uh, your fire alarm as nuestro object, yeah? Entonces, por ejemplo, eh, yo no puedo, eh, ¿cómo decirle? Yo voy a mandar a alguien a que me lo arregle, ¿sí? Pero voy a tener, voy a mandar a, o sea, voy a tener algo o conseguir que algo esté arreglado, ¿sí? Entonces, son dos cosas diferentes. Una es mandar a alguien a hacer algo y la otra es la pasiva, que sería nuestro objeto que se convierte en nuestro nuevo eh, eh, punto de referencia o, o, o el que toma la acción, el que va a recibir la acción ahora. Entonces sería fixed porque un objeto va a estar arreglado. Ok, recordemos la voz pasiva para que ubiquemos un poquito, ¿sí? El, yo creo que por ahí va la cosa. La voz pasiva um, tiene una estructura, esto es gramática, ¿sí? La voz pasiva tiene una estructura, ahorita voy a abrir la, eh, ¿cómo se llama? La board, ¿ok? Voy a abrir la board aquí. Y vamos a poner acá, ¿cómo se construye la voz pasiva? Recordemos, una voz activa, comencemos por la activa, es yo, I, do my homework, ¿sí? Es una manera fácil. Pero si no importa quién está realizando la acción, sino que importa la acción realizada, ¿ok? Vemos las dos diferentes. La activa es el que la hace. Okay, el, la, la, el foco de importancia. Pero en la pasiva, no nos importa quién haya hecho la acción. Nos importa que la acción esté realizada. Entonces, my homework se convierte en mi nuevo sujeto. ¿sí? ¿Por qué? Porque esto es lo que me interesa. ¿Quién la hizo? No me interesa. Okay. My homework. Y voy a decir. Miren, is done. Para convertirlo a voz pasiva, yo necesito el verbo to be dependiendo ya sea en tiempo presente o en el tiempo que yo esté ubicando la acción. Puede ser en tiempo pasado también, ¿verdad? Que ha sucedido esto. Entonces, por ejemplo, yo puedo decir my homework was done uh -huh. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Ayer quedó hecha, ¿verdad? Se hizo, ¿ya? Entonces, el, el que hace la acción no es importante, pero es exactamente la misma idea. Miren, I do my homework, prácticamente es lo mismo que my, home, my homework is done. Done, ¿ok? My homework is done, permítanme, que yo tengo todos <ríe> en estos días. Uh, hoy sí, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah. Yeah, so I'm sorry. My homework was done. Y de veras que fíjense que mi hija hasta se quedó sin voz estos tres días y así he estado un poco yo ahí tragando grueso también. Ahí tengo la otra chiquita y estamos haciendo esfuerzo. Ok, vamos. <coughs> Hoy sí. I do my homework and my homework was done. A ver si recuerdan este ejemplo que vimos cuando... Estábamos eh, contando la historia de la canción de Elvis Presley. Tal vez alguien lo recuerda, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Qué fue lo que pasó en esa canción? Ajá. A letter was written. ¿Sí? Pero ¿quién escribió esa canción? We don't know. Uh, en el mero momento podríamos decir que fue él, ¿verdad? By the man. Acordémonos que... Aquí en esta no me interesa quién lo hizo, pero lo puedo poner y es opcional. By me, ¿ya? 
o puedo poner quien la haya hecho, ¿verdad? En este caso, como era I, I pasa a ser el autor. El autor es by me. ¿sí? Entonces, a letter was written by the man. Si yo la paso a voz activa, sería the man wrote a letter. ¿Sí? Entonces, aquí estamos recordando no, la voz no, pasiva, ¿sí? Active and passive. Active and passive, ¿ok? Entonces, pongamos eh, ese, ese ejemplo que tenemos allá. A ver, ¿quién me lo recuerda? Díctenme el que estaba en el ejercicio. Uh, you should... Uh, what you should... No, to get, right? Uh -huh. You should get your fire alarm. Uh -huh. And then fixed. Yeah? Your fire alarm fixed. No importa by quién, ¿verdad? By the experts, by the expert, or I don't know, the technician, whatever, right? Que no está consignado ahí, ¿sí? Entonces, si yo lo cambio, eso, este the expert no está consignado, por eso es que tal vez no lo, eh, no lo consideramos, pero esto no es importante, por eso no está en la oración. Entonces, si la pasamos a voz activa, the expert o quien sea, the technician o donde yo lo mande a reparar, ¿ok? The expert uh, fixed, yeah, okay, the, fixed the alarm, okay, ya lo tengo como un sujeto, sí, pero, okay, en este get, este get que está acá, hace que yo le pida al experto que arregle mi Alarma. Entonces, voy a ponerlo así. The, I got the expert. I got the expert mm, uh, to fix. Aquí sí es to fix the alarm. Porque esta sí es voz activa. Y esta es voz pasiva. ¿Sí? Entonces, eso es lo que hay que comprender. Si está en voz pasiva o si está en voz activa. Ok. Ahora, puede ser en cualquier tiempo verbal. Ok. Puede ser en pasado. Puede ser en presente. Ok. En la voz pasiva no importa quién haya hecho la acción. ¿Qué importa? Que la acción fue hecha. ¿A dónde lo mandé a hacer? No importa. ¿A dónde mandé que me lo hicieran? No importa. Importa que la acción está hecha. Ok. Uh -huh. Uh, what happened if I change the last sentence? Uh, uh, yes, for example, the expert, the expert, uh, I don't know, uh, gets, gets to fix the alarm. Ese ya tendría otro significado. Ya no sería un causative. <clears throat> sería the expert. Got to fix, see? ¿Sí? No, gets, you said gets. Yeah, yes, gets. Gets to fix the alarm. Esto ya significa otra cosa yeah, diferente. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eh, yeah. Necesito yeah. un object aquí yeah. para yeah. que esto sea yeah. un cosa, ¿sí? Yeah. Aquí yo necesito. Yeah. Yeah. Y de todas maneras voy a necesitar yeah. the alarm fixed en este caso. Vale, el significado que está dando esta oración, esta que usted me dice, es el experto o el técnico, lo que sea, ¿verdad? Repara o alcanza a reparar, logra reparar la alarma. Muy diferente. Muy diferente a que alguien mande a arreglar algo. Entonces, uh, here I have, for example, I got... The expert. Yo le pedí o le mandé al technician to fix the alarm. Okay. Ahora, si yo cambio, voy a tener esto. ¿Ya? 
Si yo cambio el orden, va, sí, voy a regresar a la, a la voz pasiva otra vez para que recordemos. La voz pasiva proviene de una voz activa. Ok. Subject plus the verb plus the action. Ok. Plus the complement. Pero la voz pasiva. Sorry. Subject, verb, and complement. The complement is the action. Ok. Entonces, vuelvo a poner otro ejemplo. Vaya, vamos a poner um, ahí. Voy a poner acá cook. Uh, order, no, cook. Está bien. Y aquí le voy a poner dinner for my family. ¿Ok? ¿Quién está haciendo la acción? Yo. I. I. Ok. I. Then, ¿qué acción está haciendo? What is the action? Cocinando. Cooking, right? Or oh. cook. Exactly. So, what am I cooking? Right? What am I cooking? For my family. The family. dinner. The dinner for my family. Okay? The dinner for my family. All right. Esto es un direct object. Y para los que se acuerden como yo siempre hago la... La... Perdón, volví a hacer el mismo, fíjense, eh, mistake. Direct object. Ok, direct object es esta, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo necesito que dentro del complement voy a sacar mi direct object. Ok, plus the complement. Yeah. The direct object could be only the dinner. The complement could be for my family not important. Ahora, lo que sí viene a ser importante es que el objeto directo es quien recibe la acción del verbo. ¿Ok? Entonces, vengo yo y para convertirlo en voz pasiva, to become this in a passive voice expression, voy a pasar este objeto directo para mi nuevo sujeto. ¿Ok? Así. The dinner le voy a poner para que, bueno, no le pongamos da para que lo visualicen mejor. Dinner for my family. Is cooked. Necesito el verbo to be para poder hacer mi Voz pasiva. Entonces, definamos cuál es entonces la fórmula de la voz pasiva. La fórmula de la voz pasiva es el antiguo direct object se convierte en mi subject. ¿Ok? Plus uh, the verb be. Plus the participle form of the verb. Participle, right? Participle, okay? That's the past participle verb form, okay? So I will write verb because it doesn't sound good just to be for, all right? Entonces, vemos que este objeto directo pasó a ser mi nuevo sujeto. Luego, tengo que agregar el verbo be para que me le dé sentido al, a la voz pasiva. Ahora, ¿el autor puede o no puede ser importante? Es opcional si usted lo menciona o no. Y la palabra que usamos es by. Entonces, dinner for my family is cooked by me. Ok, acordémonos que los object pronouns son estos, ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso vamos a ver estos como el autor. 
by me, by you, by them, by um, her, by him, all right? So this is the passive voice. And that is why we have to use fixed instead of to fix, all right? Because it's not active voice, it's passive voice, okay? Are we okay so far? Kevin? Yes, teacher. Thank you. All right. All right. This is why. Everybody? Clear like horchata? Yes. All right. Very good. Now you remember. Tell me, Weaver. This is a practice teacher. No, yeah. you said we hand our hands. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. All right. But it's okay because we need a, a feedback always about these sentences. Yes, of course. And the passive voice structure is kind of, sometimes it becomes confusing because there are verbs that are transitive and they uh, don't have a uh, direct object, okay? They don't have a direct object. They can't, uh, for example, if I say, oh, right, like this, uh, it's transitive, why? Because yo no puedo bostezar algo, ¿verdad? yo no puedo bostezar a alguien, solo puedo bostezar, ¿sí? ¿Puedo bostezar un bostezo? No, puedo bostezar o puedo hacer un bostezo, ¿verdad? tener un bostezo, dar un bostezo. Pero bostezar no tiene objeto, ¿ya? Entonces, ese otro tipo de verbos también nos puede dar un poquito de problema a la hora de hacer los ejercicios esos. Pero continuemos, ¿sí? ¿Estábamos en qué número? Uh -huh. Number three, ¿ok? What you should do before an emergency occurs. Ajá, miren, todo eso es el sujeto, ¿sí? Desde what hasta is. Por eso hemos visto los complex subjects, right? Remember? Completo. Desde what hasta occurs, right? Eh, es un sujeto, ¿sí? Luego tenemos el verbo be, ¿ok? Be. Ahora, esa es la voz pasiva. Necesitamos el verbo be, pero tenemos un causative ahí. Ok, tenemos un causative después del verbo be. Entonces tenemos to get. Entonces de ahí tenemos nuestro object, direct object, your fire alarm. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que sigue? No puede ser un infinitivo, tiene que ser un pasado participio. Ok, now let's switch into English again. And number four, number four. Who wants to read number four? Uh, she had to have her phone number changed because she was uh, she was receiving obscene calls from a stranger. All right, and here we've got two things. We have the order, okay, and also the obligation, right? right. The obligation of doing that. So that's why we have had to have, right? Because we can also say she had her phone number changed with no obligation, right? But she had the obligation of changing her number. So she had to have her number changed. Where? In the company, right? The company is the one who is going to do the action, to perform the action, okay? So it's not important to see who changed it, right? Because she was receiving obscene calls from a stranger. All right. So changed. Let's look at number five. Her dress was too long, so she had it uh, shortened. All right, yeah, because shorten is the right. present, right? Shorten right. is the present. Then we have shortened. We Yes, right. all right, past participle. Past participle. Yes. 
Okay, let's look again and continue. Number seven, no, number six, I'm sorry. Number six. You'd better have a plumber mm -hmm. repair the leak in the bottom. Exactly, right. repair. Repair. Because the person is going to perform the action. Yes. Number seven. Instead of buying a new pair of shoes, I have my old ones repaired. Okay. En español esto sería, mandé a reparar. Okay. Yeah. Mandé a reparar los viejitos. Yeah, <laughs> mis viejitos. Number eight. That seems funny, that is why I said it. <laughs> Number eight. I got every every John in the family to sign Marit's birthday card before I sang it to her. Okay, you say I got the verb get needs to, right? So it is to sign. Very good, Hosman. Number nine. I didn't have any time to hide my sister or tie my paper last night. Hi. Tie. Mm -hmm. Because the verb have doesn't need it, right? Doesn't need the verb, the particle two of the infinitive. So we can say tie. Right? Number 10. The teacher got the students, the student uh, to write the first quiet line of the poem to make it easy to memories. Right. For <laughs> um, yeah, to write. To write, yes, to write. <laughs> okay, 11. It's similar. Regular repetition makes one to learn new words easily. Are you sure to learn or? Just learn. To learn. The verb make, does it require make. to? A ver, jóvenes, alguien? Do you agree? <laughs> learn. Learn, right? Learn. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, uh-huh. How much did you get? Get uh, required is uh, the, the verb has to. I'm sorry? Get requires, requires you uh, to pronounce the verb to. Exactly, you have to consign that. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Now, how much did you get? Se sacaron cabalito? O les hizo falta alguno? 
there are 11 uh, questions or items, items, right? You got them okay? Does anybody have a question? This is a practice teacher. Yes, I it is. It's not easy. Practice. Yeah, we have just to remember, this is memory, I said, memory. Make, not to, right? It have, no to either. Uh, let, no to. Help is optional and it's the only verb that it is optional that you use to in the, when you are using this as a causative. Um, and then you have the others like require, order, allow, permit, um, attend, uh, remind. Those are, those verbs are causative that need or require you to um, a, add the particle to, to the action, okay, to the main action. Okay, remember, we have two different causative verb structures. We have the structure for active voice and for passive voice, okay? For active voice and for passive voice. For passive, it's required to use the past participle verb form, okay? So let's do another exercise, okay? And here maybe you are going to understand the passive structure. This is going to be, I mean, you will understand better, okay? The usage of the passive causative verbs, all right? And it's the next exercise in that uh, in that site, but I will send it through the chat. Here you are. Okay, click on the link, and let's do the exercise together, guys. Do you mind uh, giving me just a short moment i will come back in no time all right just one second great teacher it's a great teacher How's it going? Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. I'm back. Um, how's it going? What number are you in? Five. This one is easier, right? This one is easier because now we understood the uh, passive oil. We're reminded. Remind about it. 
Okay. And usually with the recommendation or suggestion, we use this, right? We use the causative and the passive voice, right? Good. Okay. Okay, good. You got your eleven of eleven. Nice. Uh, is Santiago, right? Says Roberto. Okay, people. Let's look at number one and the exercise we are doing or you have done already. I got my hair yesterday. Uh-huh. What is correct? Do, do, or done? To do, do, or done in number one. Done. Okay, great. And number two. The teacher may just rewrite our size. Okay, let's refine pronunciation. Made us. Made us make, rewrite. Made us rewrite. Our essays. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Pronunciation the last. Oh. A side. Yes. A -side. Our essays. 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 Ajá. Uh -huh. Quiere decir ensayos. Nuestros reportes. Ok. Nuestros ensayos. Yes. Muy bien. Normalmente okay. ensayo se le dice al resumen de lo que uno tiene que presentar, su, su, su trabajo, yeah. ¿verdad? Yeah. Essays. Ok, number three. I had my sister clean my room. Very good. Number four. Where can I get my jacket dry cleaned? Okay, dry cleaned. Dry, dry cleaned. cleaned. Uh -huh. So lo que hay que pronunciar ese final como una de dry cleaned. Dry mm -hmm. cleaned. Yes. Number You should have your walls painted. Painted, yes. Mm -hmm. Number six. Yes, um, I got my father to buy uh, me an iPod. Very good, Hosman. Yeah. Get requires two, so this is why we're using to buy. Number seven.
And you should have your tooth extracted. Yes, extracted. Mm -hmm. Extracted. Yes, you're right. Extracted. Mm -hmm. Number eight. I got my brother to wash my bike. Yes, there you are. Number nine. My friend had his wallet stolen in Central Park. Yeah, the object, right? Mm -hmm. Stolen. Stolen. Number 10. Nobody can make can make me believe you. Yeah, so you are a liar, right? Nobody can make me believe you. All right. Number 11. You should have your car serviced soon. Yes, number 12. You should get your laundry done tomorrow. Yes, number 13. I had my article revised. Very good. Revised. Revised. Y cuando termina en un sonido de letra S, como no es, um, bueno, cuando termina en un sonido de letra S, tenemos que poner el sonido de la T, T en vez de la D, ¿ok? Revised. Revised. 14. Mm, my, my teacher, my Go teacher ahead. made <laughs> my teacher made me do extra homework. Yeah. Okay. And number fifteen. This is not very good extra homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me go. Yeah. And let it go too, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like frozen. <laughs> Uh -huh, I like frozen. All right. <clears throat> so if you submit your quiz, oh, 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 what happened here? It says for 10 of 15. Oh, I didn't do the number 13. Did, it, did you do it? I didn't click on it. Okay. Did you get your 15 of 15? Yes, I did. Okay. No, Is I it, didn't. Didn't you? No, but... Uh, which one? Uh, which one? Uh, I don't know because I I, 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 I test again the, the task. Uh, no problem. Let's check it. Let's check it. Okay. I got my hair done yesterday, right? Number one. And what number are you in now? Wilbe? I was wrong uh, in almost uh, all day because the eight, nine, ten, twelve. Eight. 
It says, I got my brother to wash because it's yes. the verb get, but it requires the particle to. Okay. But mm -hmm. he get and got is the same. And yes, it is. But in a different uh, uh, tense. Tense. Yes. So it means the verb. It has to be uh, with, with two plus the verb. Yes, exactly. It, and it could be also, I will get my brother. Okay. I will get my brother in the future. I can use it too. I got to. I get to. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, number nine. No, which one was the other one? Yes, it, it was the number nine because uh, 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 I don't know if, if the verb, the verb in the sense in the in the. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So you didn't know what was the past participle. Uh, yeah, it's correct. Uh, okay, the because present I'm... tense is still. The mm -hmm. past, the simple is tall. And the past participle is stolen. Okay. Stolen is still stole, stolen. Mm -hmm. So there is one practice you may do, guys, to master the tenses of or the verb forms of each different tense. Right, because you can remember as a family of words. For example, I can think about have. I can think the three verb forms at the same time, right? Have, had, had, right? And I can think about another one. O sea, vamos pensando las tres formas cada vez que recordemos un o tengamos que usar un verbo para que se nos vayan memorizando las tres formas. Okay, las tres formas. Acuérdense que los tiempos verbales también vienen dados por eh, helping verbs o auxiliary verbs. También existen los otros verbos que nos cambian los tiempos de los verbos hacia los tiempos compuestos. Por ejemplo, el presente perfecto y todo esto. Pero ¿qué es lo que más utilizamos? Las tres formas, base form, simple, past, verb form, and the past participle verb form, okay? So if I think about do, did, done, service, 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 believe, believed, believed, uh, let's see, steal, stole, stolen, wash, washed, washed, extract, extracted, extracted, to buy, by, but, and bought, all right? So this is the way I think, it's a tip, it's a tip. Well, we have another exercise. I don't know if you wanna do it. It's the worksheet number three in that website. And it's really interesting because it's, I think, um, all mixed. Okay, I will give you the, the link. Okay. Are you there yet? You should help to come which number are you now, Santiago? Yeah, wait a minute. I, I am uh, finished the send you the, the, the score. Yeah. The one of the, the, of the yeah, one yeah. number it's two? Okay. It, it, All right. Okay. Rafael, are you there yet? Okay, what number are you in now? Bueno. 
Boris, are you there? Salvador, are you there? Solid here. I have. All right, Boris. Are are you doing the the exercise I sent? I I am confused. Oh, I okay. Confused for me. Okay. But are you doing the exercise? Um. Yes, I am complete the exercise one and two. Oh, okay. Um, for uh, the des description for uh -huh. the uh, classmate. Okay. Uh, it's raining. I. It's raining. Too. Oh, okay. I. I. Uh, I listen. I know. I know. Fading in and fading listen. out. Yes, I don't listen. Uh, very good. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. But if you have any question, please let me know. You can use the chat too, Boris. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, people, let's start. Let's do it together. I will slow down just a little bit. I was really excited tonight, but now I'm coming down and calming, right? Um, because I cannot yell out. So here we are. Number one, why don't you have your old car mm -hmm, instead of buying a new one? So fix, fixed or fixed? Fixed, fixed. Yes, you're right. Number two. My brother usually makes me to his homework. I do, yes. What about number three? Number three? I'm sorry, but I can let you stay overnight at your friend's home. Okay, good. Number four. I got the plumber uh, to change the broken pipe. All right, very good. And plumber has two sounds. It can, sometimes you're going to listen to this letter B, but this B is silent, all right? So you can say plumber, plumber, all right? Plumber. Number five. 
You should have your car. Service. Serviced. With a letter T oh, at the end. end. Serviced. Uh -huh. Number six. I will, I will let you take a break for 10 minutes. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I you, just, you, you let me, but you let me, do, I understand, <laughs> you let me take just a minute of, all right, <laughs> thank you guys. Number seven, uh-huh. The colonel, the colonel made the soldiers wait in the hot sun for several hours, okay. for several hours. Okay. Yes, because the verb make doesn't require the action takes two in the form. Number eight. I have the roof fixed last year. Great. Number nine. Military forces had the whole town evacuated because of the earthquake. And it says the whole, whole with letter J, right? Whole, because whole. it's letter right. H. Yeah, the sounds of letter H is, yeah, like that. Uh -huh. That's the earthquake. Now, number 10, it says, do you really think you can make me, mm -hmm, you? Do you really think you can, you can make me forgive you? Okay, great. Number 11. Uh, we had our marriage photos framed after the wedding. Okay, good. Uh -huh. Number 12. I got the dry cleaner to iron my suit. My suit. Hey. Number 13. I have I had all our vacation photos printed. Right. Yes. Number 14. Unfortunately, I had my wallet stolen in the shopping mall. All right. And the last one, number 15. Okay. Por si me voy porque ya está empezando a llover algo fuerte aquí. All right. It's okay, we'll be Here too. Here is rained very heavy. Very intensive. Oh, okay. Okay. Two. Well, try to get connected, to stay connected, guys. Uh it's about half an hour to finish. Okay. I hope you can stay. Number 15. Have you, Have you had, had your, your kitchen okay, disinfected? Right, it's correct. Sorry. <laughs> Very correct. good. Very good. Okay. How much you got? Of course. Complete score. I got 15 of 15. Yes, Kevin, great. Hasta yo estoy contento. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. You you must. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. This is one of the headaches when we are still learning. But you have used this before. What you haven't, maybe it was realized about 
this structure, okay? Uh, solamente quiero hacerles ver que eh, estas estructuras eh, nos van haciendo como elevar un poquito nuestro nivel, ¿verdad? De, uh, de speaking. Entonces, tratemos siempre de meterlo en, nuestra, en nuestro día a día. Lo que antes decíamos, como por ejemplo, en un sentido básico, eh, no sabíamos decir yo mandé a hacer una camisa, por ejemplo. Yo ahora lo puedo decir, ¿verdad? I had a shirt made. All right. So, es más sencillo, ¿verdad? I had a shirt made. Or, I had the tailor to make my shirt. Okay. Entonces, ya ahora ya vimos que la estructura es manejable. ¿verdad? Es manejable. Solo hay que tener el cuidado de poner cada cosa en su lugar. Y siempre les insisto, order your idea first. Let's go to basics. Subject, verb, complement. Cuando decimos verb, the action can be caused by another, another actor. Okay, so it's necessary to see the structure and to order our words, to order our ideas, following the structures and then it becomes naturally okay it becomes naturally and you won't feel <laughs> the time that you are mastering this uh, you are using this correct all right people so let's continue with the topic that we had today it was really important to practice this era muy importante que practicáramos esto por eso eh, tomamos el tiempo Mira, para hacer estas de esta manera. Entonces, vamos a irnos de regreso a el tema en que estamos, porque nuestro tema siempre es necesario para ver que allí en ese contexto se manejan estas estructuras. Entonces, tenemos que el tema para el día de hoy era brand awareness, but the vocabulary related to brand awareness. Here we've got brand awareness vocabulary, and this is your session number 21. Okay, this is your session number 21. Hey, about of ending, yes. Okay, brand awareness vocabulary. Do you remember what brand awareness was or what brand awareness is? Brand awareness. Conciencia. Okay. Uh, but in English. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it is, it is correct. Uh, in English, please. Brand awareness. If when the consumers uh -huh. are loyal uh, with your brand, maybe? Exactly. It's one component of the brand equity. And the brand equity, we, we said before that we add value to our product. We are add value to our concepts. Uh, it's not just about the price, but how people know our brand. So the brand equity components start by the brand awareness. This one has to be the first one, right? This one has to be the number one. So let's take it right here. And yes, I think the brand loyalty is the brand, ex the brand experience, okay? So I could say like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so brand awareness is the first component of the brand equity management. Uh, the actions that you take for everybody get familiar to know about your brand okay then this vocabulary is necessary to define the terms related to all this process right because we want to get to the brand loyalty we, we need to go all over the components and that's the first component 
So there are words related, look, trust, reward, satisfaction, support, quality, price, related to brand loyalty. What are the terms related with brand awareness then? This is what we are going to study today. And our agenda has been like having our feedback, uh, then the causative verbs and the vocabulary about branding is right now. Okay, we are starting that. We have some written exercises that we are going to do in the breakout rooms. Um, it's a comprehension thing related to the conversation we've, we've got in the man. And here we've got a discussion. Let's start by discussing this. Should a small business invest in raising brand awareness? Okay, should a small business invest in raising brand awareness? Brand awareness is that to make customers uh, know about your brand, know about your existence, your purposes, your product, who you are, and what you are, okay? So, Should a small business invest in raising brand awareness, right? Okay. What do you think? What do you think? Should small businesses invest in the awareness? What is brand awareness? Awareness. Vaya, pongámonos al corriente entonces. Lo que estamos viendo ahorita es empezar una discusión. We are starting a discussion about small business. Then. Okay. Uh, should they invest in raising brand awareness? Uh, I consider that for a small business, uh, it's not necessary because your target or uh, your potential customers uh, um, uh, is a, is a, is, is a, a small group and uh, this business, uh, I don't invest in a lot of, uh, marketing or brand awareness? So your answer is yes, they should. No. No, they shouldn't? They shouldn't. Okay. Okay. And you say because uh, the group of customers is too small too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, they shouldn't. A ver, ¿quién dice que no debieran? No, usted dijo que no debiera. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't worry. Okay, entonces, ¿quién dice que sí debe? Who says that they should invest in raising brand 
awareness? No, teacher. I am agree with Nelson. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the companies, the small companies, mm -hmm. needs invest in other things. Okay. For example, uh, maybe in in the product, um, the packaging, the pro of okay. the product, mm -hmm. and the presentation and the other things. Mm -hmm. And isn't that branding too? Um, it, it is marketing, no. Okay, Branding yeah. is in brand. Branding is in marketing. Yes, no. it's a part of marketing. Oh. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's branding. <laughs> I think it is. Okay, remember what we said about the product? I have the, the scope right here. Okay, if they invest, imagine that Rexon is a small business. Let's imagine. This is just using your imagination. Uh, if this is an unknown brand and it is a small business, should they invest in the brand awareness? Like you said, well, that was the question, right? But you said that they shouldn't. They should invest in the packaging, in the product. And what else did you say? I'm sorry. The presentation. Okay, in the presentation. The okay, the image. Mm -hmm. So if you see, those are elements of the design of the product, right? The design, colors, yeah. logo, brand, the name of the yeah. product, description of the product. And I think they, uh -huh. they need to create a new product or new brand to, new, uh, to relaunch a new product. This the small, small businesses? Business. Yes. Uh-huh. Because it's, it's better they they are in the business, and this is better than to, to have a, a, the own product that to invest a, a recent brand awareness because this is a a, a a bigger brand. Okay. Uh huh. Or and... maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe I don't have uh, claro, clarify. clear, clear. Uh, what is brand awareness? Ah, okay. For that, uh -huh. I say no, they shouldn't. But if I have clear, uh, what is the brand awareness? Maybe I I can say yes, they shouldn't. Okay, yes, let's define best. brand awareness uh, then. Let's, uh, let's define this term. This term is related to uh, how much the people know about your brand. I mean, uh, if they get familiar to your name or to your product or your business in the market, right? Uh, brand our awareness is when the customer know or get familiar with know about your brand or get familiar with your get familiar about let's say your brand okay now there is something that we need to know okay there is something that we need to know i was uh we need to understand that branding <clears throat> That branding is about the name or the brand as a product, but also as an organization. But brand is a symbol too. You can recognize a brand as a symbol. You can recognize a, a brand as a person or as a product. For example, let's think about a product Okay, if I tell you that I have need, mm, I need 
a shampoo, okay, a very good quality. Which one would you recommend? I, I don't use shampoo. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't you? Oh my goodness. No way. I want the coche. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Palmo Olive, teacher. Oh, okay. But well, how about the coche? They said is the best. I don't remember. I, I know that I, I, in my house, they used to have a, a bowl of that. So and it smells and something like that. But my mom said always that it left your hair so beautiful, soft and attractive, bright and very healthy. <laughs> yeah, this is what it's <laughs> about. The my mother told habit. me. My mother told me about that. Yeah. That, all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That my 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 grandparents used with them. Okay. Uh, Okay, and now do you know a brand that uh, trades or uh, produce jabón de cuche in El Salvador? Is there a brand that you know? <laughs> well, I don't know. They, they, they produce this soap only as no brand, right? As no brand. <laughs> yeah, handcrafted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Como artesanal, right? And they don't have a brand. They don't commercialize this as an industrial product. Okay, it's just handmade and very artisanal. Okay. And it becomes a, a brand awareness because we know about that product. We know about the product, yes. It's, it, it, that's true, that's true. So we know the brand as a product. But there is no organization uh, behind it. There is no a symbol, right? There is no person uh, related to that. So, but now let's go back to the example about the, the shampoo. The shampoo. For example, I say I need a shoulder. very good quality shampoo. Uh -huh, tell me. Head and shoulders. All right, head and shoulders. That's maybe because of his experience, right? What is a... Okay, I don't know if you use that one, but uh, ¿ha tenido alguna experiencia usted con el head and shoulders? Um, no, uh, I in the family using the head and shoulder. Okay, you use For it. The, uh, yes, I, 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 uh -huh. they, they feel good. Okay, good. Uh, use, uh, using the the marker. The brand. The brand. Uh -huh. the brand. brand. Uh, okay, great, great. So he is recommending what he is using, right? He recognized the brand as a product. And everybody recognized that brand. Head and shoulders. Who knows head and shoulders here? Who knows about head and shoulders? Me. Okay. Uh huh. How likely uh, will you uh, buy a product uh, branded with that name, head and shoulder? Any product, conditioner, shampoo, I don't know, the uh, hey, uh, combing creams or after bath, anything else. How likely you buy that? Mm -hmm. ¿Qué tan seguro es que ustedes compren un producto de Head and Shoulders? In my case, it's not, uh, it is not often. I mean, I like the shampoo that smells very well. That is all. Okay, so you look for the smelling, all right. Yes. Or the fragrances. Aha. Uh -huh. There are other people who looks a product for another quality or another characteristic, right? Maybe I will say one or two years, right? Algún, por ejemplo, a mí me gusta buscar de los que no arden los ojos, ¿verdad? Porque yo padezco mucho de mis ojos. Entonces, cualquier cosa. I'm allergic. 
para to cualquier cosa. I buy a, a I buy a shampoo uh, for my gray hair and for and for the uh, curly hair. Her. All right, yes. very good, very yes. good. A specific. Mm -hmm. Nice. And what brand do you use? Um, this is a new brand right now. I don't know, but it's new. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, I good. was looking for my I shoes. How likely shoes. would you recommend it? Yep, yeah, it's new. I am. Um, I am working, I am using, I uh -huh. don't know how, how it is. Maybe I will recommend it. Okay. How likely significa en este caso, eh, en qué grado, en qué medida usted lo recomendaría? Yeah, how yeah. likely? Mm -hmm. I am. Would you I will do it. recommend I, I, it? How likely would you recommend it? Yes, I will recommend it. I highly recommend I highly it. Recommend it. Mm -hmm. I let's say uh, I won't recommend it, or I wouldn't. Right? I wouldn't. Si no le gusta, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Esta sería la forma de preguntar lo que estábamos hablando, sí, y de contestar lo que estábamos yeah. hablando. Right. Okay. Bien. This is just as a honor to know. Y la última pregunta de la discusión era esta. Can you name a pair of strategies to increase a product's brand awareness? Maybe offer for the offer the the two for one or the uh, three for two. Okay, two for one or Three for two. Maybe a, a strong uh, advertising tip about your brand. Excellent. Strong advertising will be that. I think the best. And it's not, <clears throat> it's not so. It's not only advertising because you, you can use all promotion advertisement. Uh, you can use the social media, right? You can use any a channel of communication. It could be mass media too. Uh, but that's investing, right? That's investing. Why do you think thing about small businesses? Do, should they invest in raising brand awareness? Maybe, right? Maybe. Okay, let's let's continue, and then we're going to get a very good a uh, answer about this. So <clears throat> let's read this conversation. It's a, it's a teacher and mm -hmm. and the other other uh, strategies. Uh, uh, you buy more you participate in in win the 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 article article items the for this is you you participate in your in in, in the promotion for the for for example uh, the gas station is the saco is uh, buy buy more is a participant in the um, how do you say rip a russell russell russell, mm -hmm. russell the the car 
the new car. Okay, in a car example. raffle. All right. In a car mm -hmm. raffle. Very good. Yes, of course. Any kind of event that makes people see your brand or come to buy the product, then that's brand awareness um, a strategy. So let's read this. I just discovered this new brand of cinnamon soda. It's delicious. But when I visited their fan page, I saw they only have 300 likes. I wonder why it is more popular. <clears throat> it's probably an unknown brand. Simply put, the owners of the brand aren't trying too hard to create brand awareness for their product. This is very important when launching a new product. I guess you are right. Everyone knows about Coca-Cola and Pepsi, but I have never seen an ad for this new soda on TV. Well, yes, consumers are aware of these brands and their images and names. In other words, the cinnamon soda you are talking about needs to make people recognize it to get higher sales and become more competitive. All right. Take 30 seconds to read it. Is there any question about the vocabulary in this conversation? Teacher, I, I was working in the platform and I saw sim, simply put or simply put. Simply put. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what is it. And mm -hmm. when I need to use in all words, Mm -hmm. Okay. Simply put is when you want to give a clarification, right? And you said it, I, I will try to give you a definition, an exact definition, okay? Because <clears throat> is all right let, let me get one let me get one okay this is plainly plainly what it means but allow me to give you a concept okay here we go so i think it's easier if you read it like this Okay. En español nosotros decimos, va, mira, la cosa es así, ok, o decimos, va, míralo de esta forma, ya, yeah. o decimos también, um, <ríe> eh, es que simplemente es así, ok, estoy dando el concepto de lo que es, En pocas palabras, ya. Yeah. Como decir, en pocas palabras. Okay. Okay. I think it's better if I just gave you the definition there. 
Okay, then we have in other words. In other words, mean that you change uh, the examples, you change the meaning of, of concept. You use other words to explain what you were explaining to give um, the clarification of something, okay? So, uh, what time is it? 9.54, okay. It's raining here too. Is it still raining over there in your places? Is it still raining? Yeah. No? Yes, yes. Okay. It's raining. It's raining. <laughs> right. Okay. The thing is that I wanted you to practice the, the conversation and role play. Uh, let's do it here. Maybe Nelson and Jose Salvador, do you want to role play? The conversation. Yeah. Mr. Salvador, are you there? Yes, there you are. Okay, Nelson, you may start. Okay. I just discovered uh, this new brand of cinnamon soda. It's delicious. But when I visited their fan page, I saw they have they only have 300 likes. I wonder why it isn't more popular. It's probably an unknown brand. Simple pop. The hours of the brand Aren't training to hard to create brand awareness for their products. This is very important. Important when launch a new product. I guess you are you are right. Everyone knows about Coca Cola and Pepsi, but but I never I have never seen seen an ad for this new soda on TV? Well, yes, consumers are aware of the of this brand and their Im images and names in other words. This cinnamon soda you are talking about needs to make people re recognize, recognize. It recognize it to get high, higher, higher sizes, sizes and become more competitive. 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 Okay, competitive. So let's uh, move just a little forward and think about what brand awareness have as element in uh, the strategies that we are going to create for everybody to recognize our brand. We have, for example, the brand recall, the recognition of the brand, the top of mind, the dominance, a known brand is the brand that we uh, don't know that exists. Okay, maybe we know there is a product, but we don't know the brand of the product. Or maybe we don't know either the brand or the product, okay? I, the unknown brand uh, have a very big problem, right? They have a very big problem. If they want to increase their sales, they have to follow all the strategies that they'll, uh, that recognizable mark, uh, brands have done okay uh, have followed and this is creativity guys uh, marketing is about creativity it's not just by the book there is no a rule an exact rule it depends on the product and depends on the person and depends on the market the branding uh, needs your creativity and it starts by um, making people to recognize your brand and the first thing is 
they have to remember your name. They have to remember your colors or any visual element that can make this recognizable. But the, you have to work on being the first brand that comes to their minds when they think about a product. For example, if we think about soda, what soda comes to your mind? What soda, what brand comes to your mind? Cola champán. <laughs> yeah, Coca -Cola. sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's Coca-Cola, usually. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola. And it's uh, available anywhere. The price is accessible if they have a strong no, brand. Teacher. The I'm price sorry? isn't accessible. Isn't the price it? Is, isn't as accessible. No, actually, cola champagne it is, right? Cola champagne yeah. is, yeah. And so I'm a cola too. Yeah, you're right. Hey, you got me. Right. Yes, of course. But actually, it is because of the quality, because uh, there is no other soda with the same exact flavor they have similar flavors they have imitation because they have color and maybe the texture the sensations and everything they copied but it's not the same right it's not the same and it's not the same experience right okay this is what they are talking about this is what they are talking about to make people recognize it and how are they going to recognize it? If they remember, if the first name of brand that comes to their mind is mine, my brand, right? Then that's top of mind. Top of mind means la primera que me viene a la mente, okay? Top of mind. Eso significa, yeah, más bien. Uh -huh. ¿Qué es lo primero que se le viene a la mente? What's top of mind, all right? That's uh, the way to say that too. The dominance. The dominance is really important. The dominance is, in Spanish, we could say predominio, right? Uh, over the other brands. The dominance of the market. The dominance of the colors. The dominance of your logo anywhere, everywhere. Okay, so like a that you're uh, having these shooting, yeah, shooting messages, shooting your visual elements. Uh, you are sponsoring teams and you are present everywhere, anywhere, anytime. Okay, so that's dominance. That's dominance. Okay, people. Uh, okay. I apologize, guys. I apologize porque cuando yo me tomé el agua así se me fue. De veras hacer ese sonido feo. De veras me dio mucha pena después, así que me disculpo, por favor. No, teacher, me it was not my intention. I just was kidding. <laughs> ok, sí me disculpo porque después yo pensé, oh. <laughs> Fue como una reacción natural. Y es que fíjense que lo que estoy tomando es agua con limón. O sea, es agua que pues, tenía que tomarme esa limonadita que hice. Bueno, eh, ¿hay alguna cosa que quieran preguntar? ¿Is there any question so far? No questions. No questions. Ok, attendance. Yes, this is the uh, next step. It's Is it 10.03 or is it 10.09? Three. Three. Okay. Well. Oh. Are you guys ready? I will call the attendance. So please remember the requirements are you have to turn your camera on and also you have to say present when you hear your name. Álvaro Ernesto Aguilar Peñate. Here I am. There you are, Álvaro. All right. Thank you. Ana Lorena Lovatore y Ana. Present teacher. Okay. Boris Alexander Cortés Cáceres. Present teacher. 
Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. Carlos Ernesto Hernández de Peda. Present teacher. Y Edwin Antonio Quintero Sumaya. Present teacher. Yes, I, there you are, Edwin. Elias Nathalie Martínez González. Present teacher. Ok. Es que de veras no me siento yo hablando suavecito, guys. Eulice Torres Torres. Okay. Saben que me encanta eh, la voz de Elías. Me encanta. Él es fuerte. Así, ah, sí. Él es de mi equipo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. <laughs> yeah. Fátima Loemi Umaña Castro. Miss Fátima, I know you are there. All right. José Miguel Torres Hernández. José Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Osman Atilio Serrano. Present teacher. Ok. Karen Iset Sánchez Castro. Yeah, I know she was connected. Okay. Oh. Didn't see uh, that she was there. Is she there? Yes, she is. Ok. Thank God. No vayan a faltar, chicos, esta semana. Aunque haya lluvia, lo que haya, por favor, manténganse conectados. Kevin Alfredo Lutero Menéndez. Present. Ok, thank you, Kevin. Nelson Alberto Peraza Mejía. Present, teacher. All right. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. I know he was there. Santiago Roberto Calderón Avelar. I'm here. Wilber Alberto Perez Mendez. Present. Okay, there you are. Thank you guys for being here. So is there anyone who wants to stay in the session one-on-one? -on -one? Todos se quedaron, ¿verdad? Conmigo, qué bueno, qué bueno. Me dejaron solita. Ahora hay té de manzanilla con menta y anís. <laughs> yeah, this is what we have. Ok, bueno, Carlos Ernesto, espero que estén bien también ahí en su casa y que se recupere su hija, ok? All right. Thank you, teacher. Ok. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ok, people, if no one wants to stay, it's ok, we finish. See you tomorrow, do your homework, all right? See you. See you tomorrow. Bye, bye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Elias, bye.